And I think it's time we'll discuss the Fermi Paradox once again. But this time we're going to discuss one of the ideas from this channel, the Cool World Lab. This is a channel run by David Kipping and his team, and if you've never seen or heard about him, well he's actually one of the more interesting astrophysicists talking about stuff on YouTube, and does have some really cool topics on his channel. But extremely recently he also released this study, the Ischetian Hypothesis. I'm sure I mispronounced that, but here, read it yourself. Use your inner voice to pronounce this. Anyway, it's a pretty cool hypothesis, and it's another idea to add to the Fermi Paradox explanations. And so in this video, I wanted to go through some of the main points in this hypothesis, but also offer my perspective and basically some of the counter evidence, mostly based on what we know about human civilizations, and of course, how humans communicate. And so let's discuss Kipping's Eschatian hypothesis. Eschatian. Eschatian. Okay, give me a second. Oh, according to Google, it's Eschatian. So there you have it. And this is of course something that covers the idea known as the Fermi Paradox. The idea behind us not hearing anyone out there trying to communicate with us. And so despite our huge radio telescopes and decades of listening and observations, hoping that we're going to hear something, so far the universe remains silent. And so far we're still not certain if basically we're alone, or if everyone is just hiding and is super far away. But in this case, the explanation, or I guess the answer, is a little bit on the dark side. This hypothesis suggests that we might be fundamentally misunderstanding what we should be looking for, and it argues that the first alien civilization we detect will not be stable or live in peace, and instead their first signal might be their last signal. As in, we might be hearing some kind of a catastrophic event, or something related to a transitory, unstable, and terminal phase with the name Eschatian, coming from the ancient Greek Eschatos, meaning last or final. And that's a bit of a sobering thought. Basically here, if we do find aliens, it might be right as they're about to destroy themselves. Okay, so that's a cool proposition. But let's try to dissect this and try to understand what's going on. And to understand why David believes this is true, we have to talk about how we find things in astronomy. Because in this case, this is not the problem with the universe, it's really the problem with our telescopes and how we see things. Okay, think of it this way. So far, the easiest things to detect and to observe are usually extremely rare and some of the most extreme events. This is often referred to as the observational bias. And so, for example, when the astronomers first confirmed planets, specifically exoplanets, they were discovered around a super bizarre system referred to as the Leech system a pulsar system containing three terrestrial worlds. And so, this was not a sun like system, this was not even the red dwarf. This is a very, very unusual type of a system, only a handful of which have been discovered in the last four decades. Actually, we've discussed one of them extremely recently, so do check it out in one of the videos in the description. And so we know that pulsar planets are super, super rare. Yet, despite of this, this was the first discovery. But that's not the only example. What about hot Jupiters? When using some of the early detection methods, scientists discovered quite a few hot Jupiters, or these giant planets orbiting very close to their parent stars, which they then assumed would maybe represent most of the planets out there. But today we know that this is definitely not the case, and they're surprisingly rare. Less than 1% of sun-like stars seem to contain them. And here this was just the result of previous observations and the limits of previous observations, and once again, observational bias. And the third example would be something like a supernova. We do see them quite a lot, mostly because they're enormously bright and very powerful, but when it comes to a typical galaxy like the Milky Way, we actually only expect them to happen approximately twice per century. And so even though we see so many of them every single year, it's really because of their extreme luminosity. And so here this e-hypothesis takes this lesson and applies it to alien technology. If some kind of a technological civilization goes through a brief but momentary powerful phase of extreme energetic output, so kind of like a miniature supernova or basically something that produces huge amounts of emissions, here there's a very high chance we might be able to see it after all. And in this case, if they are producing this energy, it might be because something catastrophic is going on. For example, maybe some kind of a global nuclear war. And the thing is, when it comes to the human civilization, there are at least some parallels from ancient history. For example, we know that sometimes loud quick communication can actually be extremely important and has been used in different cultures. And normally this is used in some kind of a critical messaging system. So for example, things like beacons. Extremely large fires lit on mountainous or high locations, whose purpose was to urgently relay some kind of a message, such as alerting the military forces of approaching enemy. 
or sometimes in order to announce some kind of a great victory. And here the signal was supposed to be very intense, highly visible and noticeable from far away distances. So this was a perfectly designed transitory message. Likewise, other cultures used smoke signals, such as for example in ancient China, where guards posted on various parts of the Great Wall would usually use carefully controlled puffs of smoke in order to alert troops of incoming threats. And this was a very effective communication method over extremely long distances and by its nature was supposed to transmit bursts of information, basically alerting everyone of a potential catastrophic event. And so these examples sort of highlight the main principles of this E hypothesis. If there's a civilization that's developed enough to produce these powerful signals, they're probably only going to be used in case of an emergency. But there is also, I guess, a counter-argument. And specifically a counter-argument when it comes to actual communication between cultures, especially in the ancient world. And the main counterpoint here is that if the universe is full of civilizations, it is a lot more likely to be full of very quiet civilizations that would probably be discovered first. So basically here the idea is that it's extremely unlikely that we're going to find a civilization that's about to go through some kind of a major event. If they're all over the place, we're probably going to find someone that's just very average and someone not experiencing anything catastrophic. But furthermore, history suggests that a lot of great civilizations don't really always use these massive loud bangs. As a matter of fact, the use of these obvious signaling systems is not as common. And especially not as common when it comes to vanishing civilizations. Because many civilizations in the past simply ceased to exist without telling anyone and without any major broadcast or a major bang. As a matter of fact, pretty much most of the civilizations that vanished seem to have disappeared without anyone knowing and for unknown reasons. And the best example in this case would be the Mayan Empire. A lot of their great cities went into decline way before the European arrival and they basically kind of just disappeared, leaving a lot of cities behind. There was no loud announcement, there was no signaling, they kind of just faded into ruins. And even civilizations living next to them kind of had no idea what happened. Now today explanations involve things like internal conflict or even climate change, but honestly it's still a mystery. And here we do have a lot of examples from ancient history from completely different locations. For example the Cahokia, which used to be the largest city in North America approximately 1000 years ago, was completely abandoned around 1200 AD. And nobody really knows why, because it was never really announced and there was no signaling either. Today it's believed that it was maybe because of floods, but I guess we'll never know. Something very similar happened in Egypt with Thonis or Heraklion, with basically the entire city just disappearing. Although in this case it very likely sank beneath the Mediterranean Sea. And so here the history seems to be filled with these quiet collapses. Cities and cultures vanishing without generating any catastrophic loud signals. But what about really large civilizations living around the same time at faraway distances that might have actually gone through some crisis and potentially even had some communication, but never really got to meet each other in person? So here we actually have a perfect example from approximately 2000 years ago. This is the case of Rome in China. And here I'm going to call this the fuzzy signal. So consider two of the most powerful long-lived civilizations of the ancient world the Han Dynasty in China and the Roman Empire. Here this is actually a perfect example because we're assuming that our civilization and some other alien civilization coexist at the same time. And so despite their power and despite their popularity in their own region, they actually had no direct diplomatic contact and the only communication they had relied on a lot of intermediaries basically playing a kind of a super long game of telephone. So here they had signals in some sense, but these signals took a very long time to reach one another. And so here any communication was very distorted and quite diluted. So for example, the Roman records mentioned the Chinese, but as Ceres, or basically referring to the whole culture as the Silk culture, basically suggesting that they kind of knew almost nothing about the dynasty itself. Likewise, the Han dynasty does not have a lot of mentioning of the Romans, but they are mentioned as just some people in the West. The Chinese actually refer to the Romans as Da Qin, which though does mean Great Qin, was technically the reference to the Syrians and not the Romans. And so here there was really no direct communication, which resulted in a very inaccurate and somewhat fuzzy understanding of each other's societies. And so here these great empires mostly used this, I guess, low bandwidth communication, focusing on trade routes such as the Silk Road, and not basically relying on anything that would be loud or grandiose. But going back to this hypothesis, 
something did happen to the Han Dynasty in the early 3rd century, because it actually entered a process of economic instability and natural disasters, eventually leading to a kind of a blackout in communication with pretty much everyone. And especially Rome. And so when the Han Dynasty fell into this major decline, instead of creating any loud banks, China actually turned inward. It stopped communicating with anyone and entered a kind of a quiet state for several decades. And eventually this actually led to a major breakdown in central authority and fragmented the entire dynasty into the Three Kingdoms period. So technically the dynasty was finished. This is actually a super famous story and quite a lot of movies and video games are based on this, with the entire system collapsing when Dong Zhuo entered the capital in 189 CE. But going back to the hypothesis again, here this demonstrates that a great power can actually completely collapse, or at least enter a major unstable period, by not erupting with a loud, detectable burst, and by not announcing this to anyone outside. So obviously no one in Rome had any idea, and none of the other cultures were aware. Instead, all this was super quiet, and the Han dynasty vanished from the international stage without anyone noticing. I mean, obviously the neighboring cultures noticed, but no one on the outskirts. And this type of a quiet collapse does provide a major challenge to this Iskatian hypothesis. Because at least when it comes to human cultures, there are very, very few examples, or possibly maybe even no examples, when the entire culture collapsed, or when something catastrophic did happen, and the collapse was followed by a major announcement. So maybe the reason we haven't found aliens is not because we missed their explosions. But once again, really because most of them either don't exist or are just super, super quiet. Either too remote, too far away, or have become so efficient in terms of energy that they barely emit anything on the outside. And so how likely is it that this Iskatian hypothesis is true? Well, here David Kipping does actually use what's known as the toy model to explore some of this. And so, for example, in order for us to see some kind of a loud signal, and for the civilization to be loud enough to be visible, it needs to release more than 1% of its total observable energy budget in a very brief burst. Okay, just to give you an example with humans, we produce approximately 5,000 terawatts of energy every single day. And so 1% of that would be equivalent to about 40 million tons of TNT, or approximately one Tsar bomb explosion per day. The most powerful nuclear bomb ever with obviously more complex civilizations producing more energy. And here this is something we would have to be able to find as a kind of a burst and not as a continuous emission. Because that's really the main implication from this proposition. It means that instead of relying only on traditional searches for continuous and stable signals, maybe we should be looking for these broad anomalous transients, or basically very sudden explosions, whose presence is difficult to explain by using known physics. And so here the hypothesis proposes looking for very anomalous transient explosions, something that we know Vera Rubin Observatory is going to be able to detect very, very well. We're actually going to be hearing more about the results starting in 2026. But the second implication is that if we do see something, it's not going to be a hello sign, it's more likely to be a goodbye sign because here we might be witnessing the civilization's final moments. A kind of a cosmic SOS, finally detectable because it was their last extremely loud gasp. And so definitely an intriguing proposition, but as I mentioned, also maybe not entirely reflective of what we know about human civilizations. And at least when it comes to communicating between major powers and certain cultures disappearing, and not really leaving behind any marks or making any major announcements. And so at least for now, the search continues. SETI research is still going pretty strong, and there have been some major observations in the last few years that we've discussed in some of the videos in the description. But at least for now, we haven't really found anything. And so on that note, well, let me know what you think. Do you think this makes sense? Do you think we're going to find some kind of an alien signal that's basically going to be their goodbye message? Or do you think that historical examples from the Roman and the Chinese empires make a little bit more sense? Anyway, go check out David's channel because it is pretty cool as well. And on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos and videos without any ads and can DM it directly or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.